Thank you, Chair. When I submitted this matter of public importance, I did not realise just how timely it would be, because a little bit less than two, a little bit more than two hours ago, the High Court blew a hole in the Albanese government's final excuse for their inaction to protect the Australian community. Three weeks ago, when the High Court first ordered that the applicant in the case, NZYQ, needed to be released into the community because he was being indefinitely detained, I called on the Albanese government to introduce a preventative or continuing detention order regime. I said they could pick up what was in the high-risk terrorist offenders regime. I said they could adapt it and apply it to the highest risk offenders in this cohort of now 141 people who have been released into the community. Now, the Albanese government first said we couldn't act at all. And anyway, don't worry, we're only releasing one person. Well, 140 people later, they have acted, but only partially and only under pressure from the opposition. And what they did not do, what they should have done, and what we now know they could have done from the 9th of November is to have introduced a preventative detention regime to protect the community. Because the High Court has given a green light to the proposal that the Coalition has been talking about now for three weeks. They say in their judgment at paragraph 72 in relation to their order to release the plaintiff, nor would grant of that relief prevent detention of the plaintiff on some other applicable statutory basis, such as under a law providing for preventative detention of a child sex offender who presents an unacceptable risk of reoffending if released from custody. Well, this is exactly what we called on the Albanese government to do. This is exactly what they said they could not do until they had the benefit of the High Court's rulings. We now know they could have done that. We now know that these people did not need to be released into the community. They, in fact, could have been re-detained in custody on the application of the government to a court, and the community could have been protected from that danger and from that fear that has been instilled in them when child sex offenders, rapists, murderers, contract killers and others have been released in the community. The good news is it's not too late. The government can now finally act, because it need not wait any longer. I presume the government already has draft legislation ready to go. I assume they won't make the same mistake they did three weeks ago of not being ready. And I hope this legislation can be introduced to the House of Representatives tomorrow morning. I am certain that the coalition would provide bipartisan support for the swift passage of a preventative detention regime. I think we could get it done this week. I think it could pass the House, the Senate and receive royal assent before the weekend. And the government could immediately begin bringing actions in the court to take the, at least the highest risk offenders in this cohort immediately off the streets so they no longer pose a danger to the community. This is a very important test for the Albanese government. We know they got it very badly wrong three weeks ago. We know the Home Affairs Minister and the Immigration Minister weren't ready. They've been contradicting each other in the media for weeks as to why they weren't ready, but we know they weren't ready. And now I really hope they don't make that same mistake again. I hope they're ready to act. Because the community deserves protection. It is not good enough to simply put an electronic monitoring bracelet on some of these offenders and a curfew, but otherwise allow them out into the community. These are people who are in, in immigration detention for a good reason. They had their visas cancelled for a good reason. They had their visas cancelled because they broke the law or violated the character provisions of the Migration Act and they had no lawful visa to be in this country. The only reason why they weren't deported is because the crimes they committed were so heinous that no country in the world would take them. Well, that's exactly the definition of someone who shouldn't be free to move about our community. And this is the test for the Albanese government now. I hope, for the sake of the Australian community, they don't fail this test again. I hope they're able tomorrow, ready to introduce this legislation to act to protect the community. If they are, I am sure we will be able to, on a bipartisan basis, to facilitate passage of this legislation, because it would be untenable for the parliament to rise before the end of the year and expose the community to risk over summer that one of these serious offenders commits another crime against another Australian and we're not ready to protect them.